I'm a, a grandmother and a social worker, now retired, and I've been active with the Australian Religious Response to Climate Change, or ARC, for the last 10 years. Um, and we were at Inspiracy in Newcastle together recently, and one of the audience members asked you about hope, and I uh, really thought what you had to say would be useful for our gathering today, so could you just tell us a little bit about uh, your response? Yeah, for me, hope is not really so much about a feeling or about something theoretical. Um, it's something that uh, I live out, I guess, and I draw hope from being active, being um, working towards uh, outcomes that are going to be good for the environment and for the climate. So I guess I was inspired by Jim Wallace when he came out hmm, maybe 20 years ago uh, of the Sojourners and, and he said, you know, hope is, um, is, is something that is actually very active. It's not, uh, it, it's kind of believing um, in spite of the evidence until, and maybe not always the evidence will change, but it's believing in spite of the evidence until the evidence changes, you know. Um, and yeah, it, it's something that uh, with hope, it's a, a sort of, for me, it's an embodiment of my values and, you know, the changes that I want to see. That is, I'm actually living out um, my values and in doing so, that sort of generates energy and a connection with God and a spirit. I know everyone's spirituality is a bit different, but for me, um, it's very much a spiritual thing to be an activist. You know, it's inspiriting. It's kind of enlivening. It's um, from a personal perspective, I guess I have experienced a fair amount of despair in relation to climate change um, and very high anxiety and uh, to me actually taking action in a way taps into that energy it's sort of it's an anger I suppose it's sort of um, a joining of um, of principle with a deep anger that it shouldn't be this way that you know, my grandchildren's future and the future of a whole lot of, you know, millions, billions of innocent people is being sabotaged, sabotaged by a few greedy, wealthy capitalist, you know, it, 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 this a sense of outrage. Uh, and um, my hope gets like a, a, an enormous boost by tapping into that anger and channeling it into action you know and if if we can actually create wins that's even better you know if we can actually knock over a few tables and <clears throat> you know <laughs> upset upset a few apple carts uh, at, without actually harming anyone obviously or you know obviously it all has to be non-violent but um, yeah, then, then all the better. It, uh, earlier on we were talking about uh, Jesus' spirituality as being very active as well, or at least in the way that you saw it. Do you mm -hmm. want to say a bit about that? Yeah. So uh, Jesus did obviously take time out to pray and commune with his Father and it obviously was a very important part of who he was. Um, but he was also somebody who actually was extremely active and had a sense of a strong sense of mission, you know, a strong sense of, um, you know, that that the wrong things in his world needed to be challenged. And and he like he he wasn't crucified because he was kind and wanted to build consensus with people. He actually took a, a position on things which was in contrast with the positions of other people. And he, he always was obviously non-violent and used his, like, used words and was peaceful. 
at the same time though, um, what he had to say um, did upset people and did challenge people. So, um, so I'd say Jesus had a fair bit of fire in the belly. You know, <laughs> he wanted us to go out and transform the world, and transformations don't happen just by all everyone being nice to each other. Um, you know, love is important, but love takes different forms, and I, I think. Um, we have, to, yeah, we have to be careful not to be sort of drawn into, as Christians, understandings of love that are um, uh, have been washed, you know, have, had some of the life washed out of them. Right. Yeah. Um, you also talked about the kind of the story and imagery of the descent into hell mm -hmm. as part of Jesus' story before the resurrection. Um, yeah. Do you want to elaborate on that? Yeah, that uh, I guess in being an activist. Uh, I have to be prepared to, with Jesus, descend into hell. You know, after the crucifixion, he didn't just—he wasn't just risen from the dead. He, he actually descended into hell first, and um, that is a kind of immersion in all that is awful and wrong, and you know, the sort of things that we can tend to avoid with climate change is all the hard stuff and all the like and and we can't easily well we just can't join with Jesus as fully in his resurrection unless we're prepared to sit with mm. you know all the the conflict and the uh, the science and all that stuff that normally people mm. want to avoid mm. uh, so climate change is very confronting mm. and to actually work to address climate change kind of takes us into well into conflict could be with the police or you know conflict with the the principalities and powers you know conflict with authority that says you you know you can't stop this coal truck from going to its port you know you will be breaking the law you will be paying a fine you will be facing the court system you know and then that's kind of part of the, to me anyway, uh, it's like that descent into hell that Jesus was prepared to do um, before he actually rose from the dead. So what does resurrection look like then in the climate change campaigning context? Well, um, I guess in a more short term way, um, we're, for example, celebrating that the, the all that activist work for, I think, decades in Newcastle yesterday came out with the announcement that um, the the expansion of uh, the Newcastle port is not happening. You know, Waratah coal is pulled out. So there's a resurrection in that. There's a, yeah, we do have our winds, you know, like climate change looks like this impenet impenetrable, you know, a fortress or a, you know, what can be done about it. But people joining together in their collective effort um, that has actually produced an outcome, which, <laughs> so that is very real and tangible and positive, and I'm sure God is very pleased, you know. Uh, Every now and then, so hope's grounded in a bit of reality. Yeah, in reality, <laughs> yes, exactly. Uh, and resurrection, I guess, um, there's sort of... I mean, part of it is actually having faith and knowing that ultimately God is in charge. And, you know, that the resurrection does give some kind of reassurance that, you know... Um, Jesus is, you know, uh, what that? I, in God alone, uh, everything will be complete, and you know, justice will come. So, being a Christian, I'm fortunate to to have that kind of hope as well. And then I guess, ultimately, I do believe in, you know, the bodily resurrection, and um, so there's different levels, I suppose, to the resurrection. The other thing I was going to say is that 
um, what gives me hope is being with other people who are like-minded, who are passionate about uh, making the world a better place um, and addressing climate change as part of that. Um, I draw, a, I'm inspirited, I'm inspired by uh, people who are actually spending a lot of their time and energy on uh, stopping new coal projects or um, promoting divestment or uh, promoting renewable energy in this country. Um, and there are a lot of them hearing Aboriginal people speak about defending country. You know, when people are living out a kind of self-sacrificing life uh, in order for the world to be a better place for others, um, I am, yeah, very energised by that. And, you know, this is part of the activist world that I enjoy being part of. Right now I'm speaking at a conference where <laughs> about 350 people are gathering and you know there's just so much hope that comes from being with people. You feel like it isn't an overwhelming challenge and you know that this 350 is replicated a hundred times around the world. You know people getting together and you know deciding on strategy and how they're going to make a difference. So that yeah that that is an important part of my spiritual life as well.